Cosmos went through an absolute roller coaster ride ever since it launched Mainnet well over a year ago. And if you've been subscribed to CryptoCedo for a long time, you have been following and tracking the progress of the Ethmos project ever since that time, even well before it went on Mainnet. Today, we are entering a new era for FMOS with the launch of FMOS 2.0. How that affects the FMOS tokenomics, their software licensing, and also the interoperability between Ethereum is what you're gonna be finding out in today's video. But let's do this one by one and start with the first chapter, history and introduction to FMOS. FMOS actually dates back all the way to 2016, where it was called Ethermint. And the original vision was to basically merge Ethereum and Cosmos technology. Cosmos at that time already pioneered Tenement, was one of the earliest ecosystems to, to develop a working uh, proof of stake standard. And Ethereum obviously had the network effects and the uh, DAP economy with the EVM, the Ethereum Virtual Machine. So that project originated all the way back in 2016 and it was revived in sometime 2020, 2021 with the Tarsus team of which Federico, who has been here on my channel many times, is the founder of. So Tarsus picked up Ethermint and turned it into what is now known as FMOS. And FMOS obviously stands for EVM OS or the EVM on Cosmos is a wordplay between those two things. There were also projects such as Kanto or Kava that took over Ethermint and built it into their own chains, um, which is why moving forward, there's going to be a lot of changes for FMOS and the FMOS SDK itself. So we're actually moving away fundamentally from this philosophy that we're building this open source, um, free to use for everybody accessible, uh, Ethermint framework and we're actually focusing now much more on the FMOS SDK itself. So with that said, let's now look into more specifically chapter number two, FMOS 2.0, what it entails and some of the exciting innovative features. Now the core value proposition of FMOS is to basically bring the EVM into the Cosmos ecosystem. The goal is to deploy once and use it everywhere. With FMOS 2.0, we have a bunch of features that are making interoperability between the EVM and Cosmos much, much more faster and innovative. And the core feature of FMOS 2.0, besides the tokenomics, which I'm going to get into in a second, is in fact EVM extensions. That's the main thing that they are now innovating and that will unlock a lot of exciting use cases. Also, we have dynamic IBC, upgraded tokenomics, a new license, and overall a new brand. But this is not just a rebrand, it's actually an entire reset of the FMOS project, an entire new vision and new paradigm for the FMOS ecosystem. But let's start with a flagship innovation, and that is the EVM extensions. The big problem today for smart contracts on FMOS is that EVM smart contracts can't communicate with non-EVM ones like for example Cosmwasm. And Cosmwasm is the predominant smart contract framework in the Cosmos ecosystem used for example by Neutron, Juno, uh, Osmosis, UMI, you name it, Persistence, they all are built using Cosmwasm. And FMOS obviously uses the EVM, so there's currently no compatibility between those uh, platforms. And now with the innovation of EVM extensions, applications on FMOS can deploy an EVM smart contract and get access to the Cosmos stack core functions such as staking, voting, or IBC communication with other Cosmos chains. And this lets you build truly interoperable cross-chain applications. Let me give you an example. You might have heard of the concept of outposts in Cosmos. Outpost is basically a concept, if we take Osmosis as an example, where Osmosis is a chain, but Osmosis is also an application, right? It's this app chain philosophy in Cosmos. So the Osmosis DEX as a flagship application on the Osmosis chain, through the concept of Outpost, this Osmosis DEX can also be deployed on other chains in Cosmos. 
So you have different outposts. Just think of franchising, for example, right? If you wanna to go to McDonald's, there are many, many McDonald's around the world and you can literally drive to your town, your village, because there's an outpost of McDonald's in your town, in your village, right? If there was only one McDonald's headquarters and you always have to drive there, it would be not scalable. It would not be easily accessible for you to get there, right? But since um, a lot of gyms, a lot of restaurants have outposts or franchise uh, concepts around the world, you can easily get access to them, right? And the same is happening in Cosmos, where you have all these applications deploying outposts on different chains. The only problem right now is that in FMOS, you can't deploy anything on FMOS because it's not compatible. So this is exactly what EVM extensions are fixing. So what you can actually do right now is you can deploy an Osmosis outpost on FMOS, which means that FMOS serves as an entry point, very accessible, catered to the FMOS users, but they can still tap into Osmosis liquidity and they don't have to manually go from chain to chain to use all these different applications. What you can also do is you can liquid stake through Stride on FMOS with MetaMask. I think that is a really cool concept and a really cool application that can drive more traffic and more organic usage of the FMOS chain. Another and probably more technical innovation that FMOS 2.0 brings is dynamic IBC, which is also enabled through the implementation of EVM extensions. And this feature is going to be released quite soon. And what it does is basically it allows smart contracts to define their own packet standards without the need of chain upgrades. And also it utilizes the IBC protocol components while extending the composability with other virtual machine frameworks like Cosmwasm, Solana, or Polkadot. This may be more for the developers out there. So if you're a builder, don't hesitate to drop me a message, leave a comment under this video, or text me on uh, Twitter, at Cryptocito, and I can also connect you directly with the team if you want to learn more or start building in FMOS. Now, what you're probably most excited about is the revamp of the FMOS tokenomics. Up until now, I think the FMOS tokenomics served really, really well to roll out the FMOS token and to also roll out ownership to tens of thousands of people. And I've kept saying this in my previous videos as well over the past few weeks and months. FMOS actually has a very active user base. Obviously, right now, they're not DEP users. They're mostly uh, restakers, compounders, and people that got the airdrop. But I think if you look at the numbers, it's actually quite impressive. 60,000 monthly active addresses, which puts it into the top three, top four of all Cosmos chains across the board. So I think the lowest hanging fruit is to try and convert these existing users into actual DAP users. And this is how the tokenomics also served in the first place to actually onboard this initial user base. But now after this has been achieved, we have tens of thousands of active users around the world. The question is, how do we optimize and refine the FMOS tokenomics to now inaugurate the next era? Well, the V2 model envisions to change the emission based on the network demand, liquidity, and bonding ratio. The goal is to implement also a new staking incentive program to reward the bottom layer of the validator set. Because this is also a big issue is that with this current model, um, it basically incentivizes and concentrates the wealth even further. And if the end goal is to have true decentralization, it also means decentralization of token ownership. Now, you can also listen to Fede, uh, who is the founder of FMOS, to Fede's talk at the Gateway Conference that just happened very recently. Um, if you want to hear more information about all of what I just said, EVM extensions and also tokenomics. Now, the third and probably most important pillar for FMOS 2.0 is in fact the license. What FMOS has been suffering is actually that other projects have just taken the code base, implemented in their own chain, in their own network, and obviously that took away market shares from FMOS. And my personal view is that this is not even necessarily a bad thing, right? I think eventually competition is good. Um, the only thing that I have some issues with is when it ends up in toxicity, when it ends up in 
debates, discussions, because I th think that's really a waste of time, right? And a lot of drama that results out of it. But this shall now be over once and for all. With the implementation of the FMOS non-commercial license 1.0, which basically means that other blockchains, other developers are not allowed to use the FMOS source code for commercial purposes without FMOS's permission. This will prevent other projects from forking FMOS without paying fees to FMOS. And I think this is also a philosophical decision. It still means that the FMOS code base is open source. It just means that it is protected and other projects or developers can't just take it and build their own chain out of it, which we've seen with Kanto, for example. Um, and this is also something that's getting more and more common, right? If you look at, for example, also Uniswap, and this is just something that they decided. And personally, I think it's actually a, a smart thing to do. That said, let's look into the FMOS ecosystem. I kept you guys posted when Forge, which is not a flagship DEX in FMOS, launched not too long ago. Forge is actually a Uniswap v3 fork with concentrated liquidity and STFMOS, which is Stride Liquid Staked FMOS, as their main token. Currently, it has a TVL of $1.6 million and over $15 million in cumulative volumes. It is also heavily incentivized both in FMOS and also by Stride. Obviously, those numbers, if you compare it to the uh, osmosis out there, um, are not at all um, comparable right now. There's still a long way to go for Forge, but what I like to see is constant growth and constant refinements and also this implementation of liquid staking, for example, by Stride. So I think this is really cool. Speaking of Stride, Stride and FMOS also has, have close partnerships now. Stride is obviously a market leader in Cosmos when it comes to liquid staking, also just migrated from their standalone chain into an Atom zone. So it's now a Cosmos subsecured chain. Through Stride, 50% of the Atom that are on the FMOS chain are currently liquid staked. So you already see a very high native adoption of liquid staked assets on the FMOS chain. And they're now collaborating closely with FMOS to turn FMOS into a leader for liquid staking in Cosmos. Another application that launched on FMOS is Pangolin. And Pangolin is a DEX from Avalanche that decided to go multi-chain and it is going to be on FMOS very soon. And talking of dApps from Avalanche, there's also Tashi Finance. Tashi is a lending protocol that is now deployed on FMOS, which is built by Rome Blockchain, which is a team that also built Banky on Avalanche. And Banky is a liquid staking protocol. As far as I know, the most successful liquid staking protocol over at Avalanche. So those are certainly quality applications and partnerships that FMOS has that fit into this FMOS 2.0 narrative. Now, my final chapter is in fact my conclusion. And my conclusion is that FMOS went through a lot, but is fully on track to keep delivering and keep refining that promise of Ethereum on Cosmos, bringing the EVM on Cosmos and merging these two ecosystems. And I think that they're doing a great job also to keep pushing that narrative, they're constantly out there, they're constantly innovating, they're constantly building and shipping and also communicating what they're doing. And I think there were a lot of learnings in the past year. Obviously, launching in a bear market is also extremely hard because everyone's negative, it's hard to get users, it's hard to keep everyone motivated. But it seems like that they're coming out of this stronger. That's why I'm still extremely excited about FMOS. I also think the team has to write um, mindset, the right uh, philosophy and pace. Now, let me know, what do you think about FMOS? Did you think they were dead? Did you know about all that? Uh, did I explain to you the, the concept of EVM extensions uh, so that you can understand it? Or is there anything that you're still struggling with? Also, if you're a developer, please reach out to me. If you're interested in connecting to the FMOS team, if you're interested in building on FMOS, please drop me a message or text the FMOS team directly on Twitter. Um, and that said, uh, you'll see a lot more FMOS content here moving forward. I will always keep you posted, guys, on everything in Cosmos, but more so now on FMOS specifically. That said, stay safe, guys. Be good, and I'll see you in the next one.